Hello, how are you all? I hope you're doing well. So I have two stories that I want to look at with you today and both of these revolve around the open border and we're going to be talking about two parents and the children of these two parents got the the worst case scenario scenario the ultimate tragedy that can happen when you have a porous border the way that we do so whether it's criminals that are coming in and disguising themselves as asylum seekers or it's fentanyl that is pouring over our border. Both of these have devastating effects on Americans and our country. So the first story is about Pawn Stars. Uh, it's a show, not sure if you've seen it. I can't remember what network it's on, but it's a really popular show. I've watched it before. And unfortunately, the lead in that show, so his name is Rick Harrison, 58 years old. His son, at the age of 39, recently passed away from a fentanyl overdose. Now, the exact circumstances around how he passed, whether it was a poisoning or an overdose, I don't know. And the reason I differentiate the two is because we're seeing fentanyl laced in so many things. So sometimes uh, somebody might buy something off the street thinking it might be a Percocet pill or a Xanax pill or, or something else, not realizing that it's also laced with fentanyl. That that's why they're calling some of these deaths poisonings because you have someone maybe just taking one pill to take the edge off and they have a fatal dose of fentanyl. So whether that happened in this case or not, I don't know. But his father, Rick, the star of Pawn Stars, uh, did say something publicly and he said, uh, Yes, I can confirm Adam died from a fentanyl overdose. The fentanyl crisis in this country must be taken more seriously. It seems it is just flowing over the borders and nothing is being done about it. We must do better. Um, he went on to say, you will always be my heart. I love you, Adam. Since 2018, over a quarter of a million of, of Americans have died from fentanyl overdose. Now, when I say overdose, it could be an overdose or a poisoning. We don't know. And so much of this is coming over our border. And when you watch the border hearings in Congress... They talk about fentanyl all the time. You will have mothers of children who have passed away from fentanyl there testifying right in front of my orcas, right in front of Congress people, senators, you name it, and nothing is done about it still. And I've been watching these hearings for several years now, and nothing is being done about it. So, another parent, this one is a mom, she's actually suing. The Biden administration. Now, this is not drug related. This is actually criminal related. So these are two elements that find their way into our country. So mom whose daughter was allegedly killed by a migrant MS-13 member sues the Department of Homeland Security for one hundred million dollars. So let's look at the details and see what's happening here in this case. A heartbroken mother whose daughter was allegedly <clears throat> raped and murdered by a teenage MS-13 gang member from El Salvador has filed a lawsuit against the federal government for playing Russian roulette with our lives, accusing agents of failing to stop the suspect at the border. Tammy Nobles, the mother of a 20-year-old Kayla Hamilton, who was autistic, argues in her $100 million lawsuit that both the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Health and Human Services failed her daughter by allowing the unidentified migrant into the country without confirming his identity. Nobles and other grieving, another grieving mother testified on Thursday in front of the House panel conducting an impeachment inquiry into Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas whom they accuse of not enforcing federal immigration laws. For me, this is not a political issue. This is a safety issue for everyone living in the United States. This could have been anyone's daughter. I don't want any other parent to live through the nightmare that I am living. I am her voice. And now I am going to fight with everything that I have to get her story told and to bring awareness to the issue on the border. Sorry if I'm a little crooked. There we go. Two days later, she and her lawyer repeated her claims in an interview with News Nation as they publicized their lawsuit. Nobody at the border did their job and checked his background. 
If the feds had properly screened the suspect, even just by checking his tattoos, they would have realized he was a member of the gang, disqualifying, disqualifying him from entry into the United States, she alleged. In that case, Nobles claimed her daughter would still be alive. I want everyone to know what's going on at the border. I had no clue what was going on before my daughter was brutally murdered and raped, but I do now. And I have found that the story is just too mind-boggling. How nobody at the border did their job and checked his background. All they had to do was make one phone call to El Salvador to know that he was an MS-13 gang member on the list. What's crazy too is El Salvador, that is the country that would actually do the right thing and say, bring him back, we're putting him in jail. Her daughter was raped and strangled inside her Frederick, Maryland trailer on July 27, 2022. She had been living with the suspect who allegedly sublet the trailer from another undocumented migrant. Jeez. Authorities were finally able to nab him in January 2023 after comparing his DNA to the evidence from the crime scene. He was charged with first-degree murder as well as rape and robbery and is being held without bail. And his trial is slated for June. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement later confirmed the suspect. A 17-year-old El Salvador native was listed as a member of Maria MS-13. I could not pronounce that. Could not pronounce that word. But Nobles and her attorney, Ben Claypool, said that the teen should never have been let into the country in the first place. We're bringing this lawsuit because we're tired of being held hostage by our own country. We're tired of DHS playing Russian roulette with our lives and Kayla's lives. That's why we brought this case. We are alleging that the two federal agencies catastrophically failed Kayla and are failing everybody. This could happen to anybody. The DHS just needs to be held accountable. All they do is follow their own protocol. Lift the t-shirt of the 16-year-old boy man that was trying to enter the border and they would have seen gang-related tattoos. And guess what? That would have disqualified him from entering the country. He should have been sent back the very that very second to El Salvador. Claypool continued to argue that all they had to do was pick up the phone, make a phone call, phone call, and guess what? On the list in El Salvador was the young man because he was arrested in Ju July of 2020 for being involved in an illicit MS-13 gang. He would have been disqualified again for ever entering the country. Claypool also argues that the Department of Health and Human Services was responsible for putting the suspect in a holding facility for a couple of days and then making a phone call and confirming that this young man had what's called a verified sponsor, a relative, a known, a verified relative. Even though DHS let him in, he still can't get into the U.S. unless he's going to a known relative. Well, they blew it too. So that's several instances where they're just blowing it. And they're going to pay the price. Sorry about that. They're going to pay the price because he if he runs away, by the way, after going to his alleged verified sponsor, and then it gets even worse. He then, so he runs away from his sponsor, and then it gets even worse. When... He was at this trailer home as a roommate with lovely Kayla that was leased out by another illegal immigrant. So we are done with this. The federal government has blood on its hands and they owed us a duty to protect Kayla and the others in this country. Now, I get what you're probably thinking. What was this girl doing living in a trailer? She should be able to live in a trailer and have a roommate. And she was 20 and autistic. She should be able to live in a trailer and have a roommate. And there are so many failures. What happens? You get so overwhelmed at the border that they cannot do those basic checks like they used to do. Those quick little lift up your shirt, do a quick little interview. Oh, there's a red flag. There's a red flag. They're not doing any of that. They are rushing people through as fast as they possibly can because they are being so overrun and that's not the first time i've heard this you have border patrol agents saying we're not doing the same checks that we used to do because we are so overrun with people and that's what happens when you get three hundred thousand people 
uh, coming through the border all in one month. They get so overwhelmed, they're not, they're not able to check and catch those things. Anyway, I'll be really interested to follow this lawsuit. I wanted to highlight those. Um, this lawsuit highlights that as well because even the people um, that are going through those process, he wasn't a gotaway. He stayed in a facility. He said he had a sponsor. So this wasn't like this was a gotaway and he got caught, he got past Border Patrol. He wasn't. He was apprehended and released. That is very worrisome. Anyway, thank you for watching that video and I'll see you later. Bye.